it is time for that moment we've all been waiting for. So you see, the big screen and the small screen get so, so busy. It can be so hard to keep up, but not to worry. At Arise 360, we love to keep you in the know of all the latest film and television news. Now, the ABC Murders has just come to an end, but the BBC is already planning its next Agatha Christie adaptation. Now, this time, however, it's not going to be set in the 20th century, but guess what? In ancient Egypt. Now, the new adaptation called Death Comes as the End is the only Christian novel not to be set in the 1900s. So the story follows an Egyptian family who is thrown into turmoil by a killer on the loose. Just like most of Christie's mystery novels, there are plenty of suspects and many of them are in the family. So the series is expected to follow the three-part drama format and will premiere sometime this year. So it's January, which means war season is upon us, and the Canadian-American film Vice is just one of the many films gaining major popularity in the lead-up to the Oscars. Now, it stars Christian Bell, who has been nominated for a Golden Globe for his portrayal of the former vice president, Dick Cheney. Now, Amy Adams co-stars as Cheney's wife, Lynn, who was instrumental in pushing her husband to turn his life around in the early days. So take a look. I was always intrigued by Cheney, and I was amazed by how much this guy had gained the White House and how smart he was. So what's the plan? Well, the plan is to take over the damn place. Henry Kissinger called him the greatest combination of intelligence, ambition, and bureaucratic knowledge he'd ever seen. What's it gonna be, yes or no? So yes. You don't even know what the question is, do you? He learns very fast, and his belief was in consolidated power. Are you even more ruthless than you used to be? All these Shakespearean themes come into play very naturally. Like a puppet show, but much more enjoyable. Who wants to be an anonymous source? Make sure you work in the phrase, we don't want the smoking gun to be a mushroom cloud. That focus group through the roof. America had made a giant change from the late 70s on, and Dick Cheney was always in the middle of it. Thank you, Both Congressman Cheney. I hear you've been four. quite the ally. This is the most mysterious character I've ever worked on. He operates within the realm of legal exceptions, and he sees a longer game. We're gonna be a rat on this, are we? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, we are. He realized that real power doesn't reside in the spotlight and quietly changed history as much as anyone. So we're going to do this thing or what? I mean, is this happening? Neither branch has oversight of the VP. We can make this work. <laughs> Hot damn. Wish approved all of this? Nope. Vice. Well, now let's talk about Netflix, all right? They have been leading the charge when it comes to adaptations of comic book superhero stories with shows like Daredevil, The Punisher, Jessica Jones, and others gaining major popularity. Now, its latest offering in this genre is called The Umbrella Academy, and if it lives up to the popularity of the comics, it should really shake things up at Netflix, but not to worry, we want to show you. Here's a first look at The Umbrella Academy. In October 1989, around the world, gave birth pregnant when the day first... ...have adopted six gifted with abilities, The Umbrella Okay, now Spider-Man, oh my gosh, Spider-Man, the buzz around Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse is at an all-time high. And Sony is doing a good thing by taking advantage of that hype to release the entire script for the comic book movie online. Now, writer Phil Lord and co-director Rodney Rothman shared the link to an, the literally 
131 page script on Twitter. And unlike having to actually pay to see the movie, fans can read the script for free. Obviously, reading the script is nothing like the experience of seeing the film on the big screen, but for any working or aspiring writers out there who might just want to know how Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse first began on the page, it's a great tool to have. Okay, now look, Girl is this movie that has been gaining so much buzz. It is a 2018 Belgian drama film directed by Lucas Daunt in his feature debut. Now, it stars Victor Polster in his acting debut as a trans girl who pursues a career as a ballerina. Now, Girl was inspired by Nora Montserrat, a trans female dancer in Belgium. Now, it was praised by mainly cisgender critics. The film, however, was really, really criticized by trans and queer writers for its depiction of gender dysphoria and self-harm. So you see, it has garnered so many mixed reactions, and we just thought, look, it would be great to show you the movie through the eyes of Nora, the girl who inspired the movie. Take a look. Having a film inspired by my life is very surreal. I can't recollect a memory where I ever felt a boy. That wasn't a question to me. I was in the wrong body and I wanted to be a girl physically. In the middle of that, I started dancing and that whole combination was so challenging to maintain my dream, but also stay very close and honest to myself. The film started as a dialogue between Nora and myself. I had multiple discussions with Lucas and we elaborating very closely on the script. The passion that I have for dance, I felt he had for a film, and our friendship started with Girl. We really wanted to make this a very respectful, intimate portrait. It was very important to me that Lara was someone who was very brave and very passionate, but also very delicate and very human. She wants to fit in rather than stand out. And I think we all go through those moments in our lives. A big force of cinema is showing life from another perspective. I hope when people watch Girl that they have a sense of sympathy, but also a sense of acceptance. I think this film speaks to a lot of people that are searching who they are and who they want to be. Despite the opposition, I succeeded accomplishing my dreams and I think everybody should accept the way they are and should be accepted the way they are. So you see, the major controversy around that movie is the fact that it is about someone's personal life. So if it's about her personal life, how do you tell her how to live that life? Anyways, away from that, the late and great Carrie Fisher is known all around the world for her iconic role as Leia Organa in the original and sequel Star Wars trilogy. Now, after passing, or rather her passing in 2016, many questioned how Disney planned to use the character in the final installments of the sequel films. So the studio has confirmed that the film's director, J.J. Abrams, will utilize unused footage from previous films, The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, meaning that Leia will still play a role. Well, Fisher's brother, Todd, has spoken out about the use of these scenes, saying her scenes will look like they were shot just yesterday. Well, it's enough information to put Star Wars fans who were worrying about Fisher's appearance in the film at ease. You see some calming to all of this suspense. Now this is another story that literally blew our minds away. So it took me a while to watch the movie to all the boys I've loved before. I mean, not just me, a lot of people just thought it was another high school love story movie until we watched it and found ourselves crying at the beautifully unexpected story it turned out to be. Well, Netflix has got a special surprise on the Susan Johnson movie and the cast will like to tell you themselves. Take a look. 
almost done with my Christmas list. For Jenny, I'll just make her favorite chocolate chip cookies. For Noah, Noah kind of already has everything. Lana! Noah! I was literally just thinking about what to give you for Christmas. By the way, if we're gonna do this thing, we are gonna need a new contract. Oh. It's just a Christmas contract. Well, then I get to make the first rule. I'm not watching a Christmas horror movie. No, it's the Christmas Prince 1 and 2. I can definitely do that. One more thing. I get to tell the fans about our little secret. OK. Go for it. I am so excited. It is officially official. We are making the To All The Boys sequel. Bring on the sequel. We are so excited. <laughs> no, one second. I'll call you back. OK. I'll see you later. Hey, what? <laughs> You're gonna make the perfect John Amber. I was so happy that she ended up with Peter at the end of the movie. It's so beautiful. Now I can't wait for the sequel. Anyways, and in the world of animations, when Isle of Dogs was released just last year, it was lauded for its unique production design and portrayal of Japan. It's also now part of the award season conversation. So before it scoops up all the best animation awards, Here's a look at the amount of work that went into that beautiful production design. When you're working with puppets like these dogs, it takes a lot of experience to know how to really bring a face to life. Even if you have the best sets and the best puppets and you're all ready to go, the animator is really the one who has to go behind a black curtain and turn the scene into something that has life and has emotion and has vitality. We're trying to get a performance out of these lumps of metal and rubber and silicon and they're inanimate objects, but we have to bring life to them. I feel like I'm sculpting the performance. It's, it's what kids do when they're playing. I do think of it like moving sculpture, really, you know? We talked about at a very early stage in the production how the dogs and the humans would actually move and behave. My process is just to sit and watch the animatic. Stop licking your wound! From the timings and the atmosphere, what Wes is looking for. It's working with those rhythms within the film. We've got an amazing cast on this production. The animation comes out of that. You get their personality coming out in the style of the dog. We're listening, Al. Tell us your message. The voice gets recorded ahead of time. Why? What? Gets broken down phonetically. The actual human characters, they've got a replacement face system. All of the faces were handmade, hand sculpted. It takes up a lot of people's skill and craft, but that's exactly what I think Wes wants to see. And I think it does give it a life to it that isn't present in some other stop frame animated. Wherever he is, if he's alive, we'll find your dog. It's going to be a fight. Where's somebody supposed now, this has been really fun, and it's almost the end of the show. But look, we wouldn't dare leave you without our usual final video. How could we? So, Universal Pictures has released a trailer to the sequel of its surprise hit horror film, Happy Death Day to You. Actress Jessica Roth returns as a high school student who has again, has to die and again, kill the killer to escape. Well, here's a look at the trailer for Happy Death Day to You. Dispatch. I have an 11.55 at the hospital. Need immediate assistance. Why are you doing this to me? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, here you go. I folded your pants for you. No. Way. Dude, did you hit that or what? Ryan, I'm back. On delay, people! Uh, who's this crazy white girl? Same day, same day! Everything's different this time. Now, the killer is coming after all of us. Ryan! That means I'm gonna have to die over. Bye! And over again. To save all of you. Damn, this is crazy, man. If I don't stop the killer, more people will die. If I 
die again, I could stay dead. Failure's not an option. All right, let's see what you got. And you know that is all of us for that is all from all of us for today. So thank you so so much for watching the show. Yes, this has been absolutely amazing. Now remember that you can catch 4 p.m. right here on the Arise News channel. So until next time, for us to have this amazing run again, I am Kachi Offia, and this right here has been the one and only Arise 360.